So children, in the holidays, in the half term break, when you're not doing any home learning, there is a special day coming up. And that day is Shrove Tuesday. And that means it's Pancake Day. It's always the day before Ash Wednesday, which is the start of Lent. So Christians would give up something that they really like, it might be like chocolate, so they wouldn't eat it for 40 days in the lead up to Easter. So that's why we celebrate Pancake Day, because in the old times, they would use up all their eggs and flour and milk to make pancakes and things like that. So they'd eat them all the day before they start Lent. That's what they used to do. So I have got a lovely story. Well, ooh, it's a bit of a, a funny story. And this one is all about Mr. Wolf's pancakes. Let me move this back so you can actually see it better. This is Mr. Wolf's pancakes. Can you see Mr. Wolf's pancakes? Ooh, I've got some number pancakes here. I'm going to be using those after. But this is Mr. Wolf's pancakes. And if you look on the front cover, what can you see the wolf doing there? He's licking his lips, isn't he? He likes the look of those pancakes that he's made. And it looks like he's been bake making them himself because he's wearing an apron. So when you cook, you sometimes wear aprons, don't you? OK, let's have a little look. Oh, there's a name down here. That's Jan Fernley. And that's the person who wrote the story. Let's have a quick read of our lovely story. See if you like it or not. We've had some stories recently, the traditional tales that have had a big bad wolf in the story. Let's see if this one's a nice wolf or not a nice wolf. Let's find out. So the title says again, Mr. Wolf's Pancakes. Did you see how I read from left? to write every time. Okay, let's have a little read. One day, Mr. Wolf was feeling very hungry. There's his think bubble. He wants some pancakes by the looks. He fancied some pancakes. There we go. We looked at the picture and we saw him thinking about pancakes. Yum, yum, he said, licking his lips at the thought of the big pile of fresh, delicious pancakes. Mmm. Mr. Wolf had never made pancakes before, so he took out his big recipe book down off the shelf and he looked inside. Wolf it down recipe book, that's what it says. <laughs> there he is looking in his recipe book to find out how to make pancakes. Hmm, he's got it upside down, children. Do you think he's very good at reading? Maybe not. But wolves can't read very well and Mr. Wolf had trouble making sense of it. So he went to get some help from his neighbours. He called on Chicken Licking, who lived nearby. Please, can you help me read this? He asked. No, said Chicken Licking and slamming the door in Mr. Wolf's face with a bang. <gasps> She's not very kind, is she? We help our friends usually, don't we, children? Oh dear, sighed Mr Wolf. He sat down slowly and read the book and he worked out what he needed himself, all by himself with no help. So he saw that he needed some flour, eggs and milk and there is his recipe book. Mr Wolf looked in his cupboard for the ingredients but he couldn't find anything he needed. I'll go to the shop, he decided, and he settled down to write his list. So he wrote a shopping list. But wolves aren't very good at writing, so Mr Wolf called on Wee Willy Winky, his friend. You're very clever, said Mr Wolf. Can you help me write my shopping list, please? No, said Wee Willy Winky. Go away. <gasps> and he slammed the door. Bang! They're not being very kind. Do you think they've heard some bad things from stories about big bad wolves? I think so too. Oh, there's no need to be like that, said Mr Wolf quietly. Mr Wolf sat down and he tried very hard with his writing until he made his shopping list all by himself. Now he needed to count his money to make sure he had enough. But wolves aren't very good at counting. So he went to the gingerbread man. 
for some help. Can you help me count my money, please? He asked politely. No, I'm too busy to bother with you, said the gingerbread man, slamming the door with a bang. <gasps> Another one who's not being very kind. So poor Mr Wolf had to sit down and count his money. It took him a long time and he had to check it three times before it was right. But he did it all by himself. Mr Wolf needed a basket to carry his shopping, so he called on Little Red Riding Hood. Because she has a basket in her story, doesn't she? Please, may I borrow your basket? He asked very nicely. I'm not lending my basket to you, said Little Red Riding Hood. Now clear off. Oh, she's not very kind either, is she? She knows what the big bad wolf does in her story. So Mr Wolf set off to the shop without a basket. Oh, I'll manage, he said. So he went to these shops, Old Mother Hubbard, General Store, and he went to the Simple Simon's Cake Emporium as well. Mr Wolf went into the shop. He looked at his list. He remembered what he needed. He counted out his money and he carried his egg, eggs, milk and flour home all by himself. Now it was time to make the pancakes, but Mr. Wool, uh, but wolves aren't very good at cooking. So Mr. Wolf called for the three little pigs. <gasps> Look, children, we read this story. Can you see the house of straw, the house of sticks and the house of bricks? <gasps> They're in this story. He's not blown them down yet. Please, can you help me cook my pancakes? I'll share them with you, he said kindly. No chance, chorused the pigs, slowing their doors. Bang, bang, bang. <gasps> they wouldn't help either. Mr Wolf felt sad because nobody wanted to help him. Mr Wolf went home and he started to make the pancakes all by himself. Soon there was a huge pile of delicious pancakes on the table all ready for eating. Mm. Now, as Mr Wolf had been making his pancakes, a lovely smell had drifted out of the kitchen. All his neighbours could smell it and it made them feel very, very hungry. They wanted some pancakes too. They decided to try their luck. <gasps> now, were they very kind helping him when he needed help? Mm -mm, no. So do you think he's going to be kind back to them now? I wonder. Let's find out, shall we? So they knocked on Mr Wolf's door. Give us some of your pancakes, said the, said the rotten lot. Would you ask like that anyway? We're very good with our manners, aren't we? We would probably say, please, could we have a pancake? And then you'd say thank you. But they didn't ask very nicely. Why should I give any to you, said Mr Wolf? Not one of you would help me. We'll help you eat them, said Mr Wolf's neighbours nastily. Anyway, we're not going away until you give us some. Oh, they're very rude, aren't they? Not very polite. Mr Wolf thought very hard for a moment. There was only one decent thing to do. Oh, very well then, <laughs> he said. You had better come in. What do we know that wolves like to do? They do like to eat people in stories or animals. Let's see what happens. Oh, Mr Wolf opened the door wide and whooshed his greedy neighbours rudely pushed him aside and dashed down the hall. Mr Wolf shook his head. Mm -mm. He shrugged his shoulders and he followed them into the kitchen. And when they were all in the kitchen, can you guess what he did? Are you ready? He's always hungry, remember? Oh, no! With a snippety snappity, he gobbled them all up. And that was the end of his unhelpful neighbours. Wow! And then, with his bulging tummy not quite full, Mr Wolf sat down to eat his pile of pancakes. And he did it all by himself. Whew. Oh, dear. He's happy now. Look at his happy face. He's a very happy wolf. Well, there was nobody else around to help him. <laughs> Where had they all gone? In the end.
That's right, he'd eaten them all up. Oh, dear me. <gasps> and they ate all his pancakes as well. He must be very full because I think when I have one pancake, I get a bit full. <laughs> I think one or two is quite enough, not a whole pile of them. Anyway, did you enjoy that story? That was good to see the wolf doing something different in these stories, wasn't it? Wow, what a, what a sneaky wolf he was, though. Hmm. <laughs> right, I enjoyed that story. Now we've got more pancake fun coming up. We've got some counting out some different fruits on our pancake. And I think now we need to actually go and draw a shopping list, a write a shopping list. And then when we've wrote our shop shopping list, we can then go to the shops and buy all our things that we might need. Okay, have fun, everyone.